So there was something that Ham said um, before we went to break that I, I wanted to talk about. Yeah. And it's not. Thanks it's for not being even, professional here. It's it? not even like a real big deal, but we were talking about Kata and you were talking about like they want to groom him into being able to, you know, run the offense through him and pass her and all this other stuff. I don't think that's him. And I don't think that's something that you groom somebody about. Like they can either handle the ball. <clears> like, for instance, Harry Giles. Harry Giles could handle the ball from there, make certain passes. That's just what he did. I don't see that from Kato. Like, I don't think that'll ever be him. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting because, uh, but it's different. What we're talking about is exactly what I was trying to describe. Like, Sabonis, how Sabonis handles handles the ball, how he can hit a, a cutter, how he can do all of those things. That's very, very like next level Harry Giles, right? Mm -hmm. It's like three steps above what Giles, just because he's been able to mature into what he is. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to Kata, like you hope that he can do some of that stuff, but realistically, you're always going to have that that idea with him that most of the time he's going to be a screen setter. He is a guy that can get the ball down low and kick it out for a wide open look. But at the G League level, I mean, he's averaging three assists a game. Mm -hmm. So that's not bad. No. That, I mean, that's that's no, no, like no. a good start because what you're trying to do is you're trying to bring skills out in a player. Like, look at Bam Adebayo. He was not a great passer at the college level, but they all saw his court vision and thought that he could be a great passer, and now he's developed into a very, very good passing big man. Mm -hmm. And so just a little different um, where I, I don't think Kata can be that, but I still think Kata can be a guy you run the ball through a bunch, especially in crunch time. And he's a guy that if you you let him go down to the block and you feed him the ball, he's going to score a lot of the time. I mean, he's a huge man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fine. We're talking about Keita and Chemezi, and you know, there's 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 going to be a very large contingent of Kings fans who want to see uh, Rashawn Holmes based off nothing else other than the reception that he got on Friday when he entered the game. But if, and, and, and again, for those who are just tuning in, this is a if, uh, Sabonis does not play tonight or, or 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 doesn't play tomorrow. Feels like the bigger the the, the bigger thing for me is De'Aaron Fox. Like, all right, one of your playmakers is out. Uh, the, the 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 center of the Kings universe is out. You're still De'Aaron Fox. If there's two All Stars on this team, you're the you're the other All Star. Like, you have the ability to ascend this. To me, it's a lot of pressure on him. It's a different position. I understand that, but he has to he has to become the primary playmaker and primary score like he has to elevate a little bit and i feel like that's what this boils down to more than anything involving Kata or chemezi or, or or even rashawn or alex lynn yeah i mean i think the point too that i'll i'll back that up with is that De'Aaron fox has only played with demonis Sabonis for like 45 games right 50 games so before that he'd never played with another big man like this at all so he understands what the game is. He understands like, of course it's on a 30 win team, you know, so he didn't win all that much without a guy like this, but that doesn't mean that you can't win, that you didn't have opportunities that you didn't figure out ways to do it. You didn't take over games. Uh, he needs to, well, we've seen, you remember when he first got back from injury, he went for double, double the first game and, and he had nine assists the second game. Well, the assist numbers have dried up again. Like he's, if this is going to work, if Sabonis is going to be out tonight and tomorrow or like five games, whatever it might be, like he has to be a guy who's averaging eight to 10 assists a game. He's got to feed his guys. He's got to set them up. He's got to break down the defense, the, the scatter uh, assists that, that they like to get. That's what has to happen. Do you think like, um, after talking to him, do you think he, he, uh, understands like, okay, I got to get back into, you know, I don't want to say put the team on my back mode, but maybe that like, I got to be the guy yeah. now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we're running. I think it was, I think it was you that talked to him the other, the other day when he was like, okay, you know, it's going to change. It's going to be more pick and roll for me. Mm -hmm. Um, And you know, it's time for everybody to step up. So you think he's, he's ready for the bigger load. He has to be. Like it's, it's a time, like, look at, at some point, like you can't just rely either on other people or you can't just say, well, we didn't win because of, we didn't have our big guy. Like 
at some point you got to step up and, and be a difference maker. And, and I think he has like a huge amount of times a season and mm -hmm. over the course of his career. Um, but it's got to be consistent. You know, like there's an 82 game season is brutal for everyone and they need to like injuries happen. We know that. And so like you have to be able to step into these moments. And for that matter, Keegan Murray has to step up. Mm -hmm. Harrison Barnes has to step up. Uh, Kevin Herter has to step up. Like no excuses for these guys. The the guys that are coming in and filling in for these positions, like those guys cannot do what Sabonis does. They cannot fill the void. All three of them combined cannot get you a triple double. They just can't do it. So that means that the other five, six, seven guys who are playing on that given night, whether that's Trey Lyles adding to this mix or it's Davion Mitchell or it's Malik Monk, everyone has to do a little bit more not try to do too much. Mm -hmm. They just need to do a little bit more of what they do and, and do it better. And, and then you can, you can survive this. I mean, that's, but it can't just be all on Fox. And if they win or lose tonight, it can't be all on, on Fox. That's, that's not what it's about. You know, real, real quick, Dame, the, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, the one good thing about DeMontis Sabonis and who he is as a player and where he excels is I don't want to say, you know, when he plays with his injury, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but he orchestrates the offense. Like if his offhand, off thumb is a little banged up, he can still do that. Like he can still do that at the Sabonis level, you know, with dribble handoffs and things of that nature. Rebounding is going to, you know, be something that we we have to take a look at and see if he can still rebound the same. But I, I do think he can because he's a two-handed rebounder. If he was just a guy that went up with that hand, it may be, you know, effective, but he goes up with two hands and he can do that. And then we talk about the scoring. Well, there's been so many times this year where he's dominated a game with scoring seven points, taking four shots. Mm -hmm. So I say all that to say, I'm just hoping, maybe I'm hoping a prayer, but maybe you, you don't see that much of his production affected by this injury with him in there. That's, a, that's easy for me to say on the sidelines and not being in his body, but there's the things that he does. I think he can still get done even with a thumb that's messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's really tough. I, I think the biggest area where they're, they're going to get clobbered is on the glass. I mean, again, we talk about like Chemezi Metu. Chemezi Metu's had 10 or more rebounds in his career three times. Hmm. Like he's almost 26 years old. That's not who he is. So we can't expect something that is is counter to who they are. So again, Keegan Murray is going to have to step up and be a better rebounder. And yeah. and Harrison Barnes is going to have to step up. And I think we, we've talked about this. De'Aaron Fox is like the the third leading rebounder on this team. He's got to, he's going to have to average seven or eight rebounds a game while Sabonis is out and, and come back and get the ball and and then find ways to push. I mean, this team really is built around Sabonis. It's not built around Fox. Um, and you're going to have to figure that one out.